How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Wednesday here on the show. My last chance to be on this program before I head to Chicago tomorrow. I will not be on this program tomorrow or Friday or Monday, but I will return on Tuesday. And I will return victorious. Because, in fact, Friday night, Black Label Pro, GCW, I will be facing Filthy Tom Lawler. Myself and Billy Starks versus Filthy Tom Lawler and Killer Kelly, and it's going to be a bloodbath for old Filthy Tom. But we can talk about that later, because we got a lot to get into here today. A lot to get into. Tonight, obviously, is AEW Dynamite. It is a very important show, because as of this moment, we don't officially have a main event for the AEW All Out show coming up on Sunday. We do have a main event. It is John Moxley, CM Punk for the title, but they have to shoot the angle to announce it, and they're going to do a segment tonight. It has been announced that John Moxley will speak tonight, and I'm sure that will lead to whatever they're going to do to lead to that match on Sunday. Also tonight, Brian Danielson versus Jake Hager, which of course is a setup for Brian Danielson versus Chris Jericho. And Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter will be facing Tony Storm and Hikaru Shida. That's all that's announced for the show thus far. There might have been more announced today that I have not seen yet, but that was the latest lineup that I saw. So we will talk about that as well as the full lineup for All Out. We do have a new match announced for the pre-show. And if you don't normally watch the pre-shows, you might want to watch this one. Eddie Kingston versus Tomohiro Ishii. It'll be the second most violent match of the weekend. We've got a lot to get into today. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Alive. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com, is noted. Tonight is Dynamite, a promo with John Moxley, Danielson versus Jake Hager, Red Baker, Jamie Hader versus Tony Storm and Ikaru Shida. And we will find out the main event for the All Out show. If there will be any stipulations, what they're going to do, that is tonight on the show. They have also added to the show Eddie Kingston versus Tomohiro Ishii, which will air on the pre-show on Sunday night, which means this is the full lineup as of right now. This is not counting the main event, although I think we all know the main event. John Moxley, CM Punk for the title. Brian Danielson versus Chris Jericho. The finals of the World Trios title tournament. Tony Storm versus Britt Baker versus Jamie Hayter versus Akaru Shida for the interim women's world title. Jade Cargill versus Athena. Swerve in Our Glory versus The Acclaimed. Jungle Boy versus Christian Cage. FTR and Wardlow versus Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns. Your casino ladder match. We need some competitors announced. Ricky Starks versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Eddie Kingston versus Tomohiro Ishii. Tony Khan said in an interview that after a stretch in which the injury bug bit a variety of their top stars, the roster will be the strongest and the best it has ever been following all out. He said he could not get into the plans too much for the weekend. But he has, quote, exciting plans for the show. He said by Sunday to All Out, and in general, it's going to be the strongest and best the roster has ever been. People love to watch All Out to see what I mean by that. He said it would, quote, probably be the most severe star-studded injury list we've ever had in pro wrestling. That's what it was. Khan said more announcements will be made today for Dynamite. The final card is, quote, going to be amazing and will help further set up Sunday's All Out. That's tonight's Dynamite card he's talking about. And he said it's different for him not to have everything tied up, quote, nice, nice and neat going into Sunday's show. That, of course, is a reference to the fact that we don't officially have a main event yet. But he said it's a, quote, good different, and he admitted he would not do it like this every time. Which, in fact, is exactly what I said. It's okay to do something different every now and then. You don't want to make a habit of it, but if you feel that you've got a story that necessitates not officially announcing the main event until the Wednesday before the show, 
A show, by the way, that no one's buying until Sunday. I think it's okay to do this every now and then. So we'll see what happens tonight. Was that the throw to me, boss? <laughs> How Look, long it's been a good week of wrestling. Been doing this? I know, I know. Just wasn't sure if you had anything else to add on there, but well, I'll give you a good... tip. Tomorrow, when I'm not here, they play that music at the beginning. That's your cue. <laughs> will I be connected, or will I have to do I it over the phone know. first? I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out, won't we? <laughs> yes, we will, and we'll find out how good of a show tonight's going to be. I'm not going to complain about Raw. Yeah, it was three hours, but there was enough on there where I was. Fully satisfied going into Clash at the Castle. SmackDown's already taped. We saw the spoilers on that. Look, we've got a celebration for Roman Reigns and some other things on there. So I'm guessing that that's going to be just fine. We'll go through NXT today. I thought that was a good show as we, you know, a lot of mixing in from the main roster as we go into Worlds Collide. So Dynamite, you're next. (laughs) You know, hopefully it's a solid show. I thought the last couple of weeks have been good, especially the way two weeks ago the show opened and closed. Last week we had the surprise of the title match, that great trios match at the end of the show. So... We'll see how tonight is, but ball's in Tony's court. He knows he's got to do something exciting, and it'll be interesting to see what they actually decide on for the main event. Raw Monday night. Man, oh, man. This show did a gigantic number, Mm -hmm. and there's not even a good reason for it. I mean, you can speculate (laughs) all you want about what the reasons are, but, I mean, I think people are watching the show. And I think they're interested in a non-Vince show. And the shows aren't like blow away exciting shows, but you know what? They're not bad. They're not horrible shows anymore. You can actually watch the show one week. And if you watch the next week to see the follow-up, you're actually going to get it. You may not like it always, but the show has improved a lot. And uh, 2.11 million viewers... A point five nine in eighteen to forty nine, a point four two in eighteen to thirty four, and this is not a show where they were hot shotting or they were promising old dudes were coming back. What this was was the follow up to the previous week. It was just a show where they followed up on storylines and promoted wrestling matches. Raw beat everything on cable swept every key demographic it beat every show on network tv with the exception of the bachelorette the show peaked in the second hour there was a big first to third hour drop keys at the games from last week were mostly younger viewers up five percent in viewers eight percent in 18 to 49 20 percent in 18 to 34 when you compare it to a year ago up 10% in viewers, 9% in 18 to 49, 8% in 18 to 34. If you factor in homes lost by the USA Network over the past year, the real percentage gain is 15% in viewers, 14% in 18 to 49, 13% in 18 to 34. Yeah, I almost sneezed, but I'm a Pro, professional. man, I love it. I am a professional. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the point of this is, I'm not saying that, like, there's no shows like this, but if you look at, like, the rest of television... Yeah, there aren't a lot of shows that year over year are up to this degree. The yeah. show did 2.16 million viewers in the first hour, 2.22 million in the second hour, and 1.94 million in the third hour. Now, obviously, we've got football coming up, mm-hmm. and uh, you know what happens when, when football kicks off, but, man, these are good numbers. This is a very, very good number for WWE. Without advertising... Brock or Roman, yeah. I mean, as you mentioned, it was just because there's buzz right now and it's follow-up from last week. And, yeah, football is going to hurt things, obviously, but you got to energize your base. This is a good time to energize your base as we go into fall here and we have more people watching TV. And it's 2022, and I'm not exactly a TV expert when it comes to what's on the air anyway, but I have a feeling that the new fall season, it doesn't seem like there's anything on the horizon for Monday nights that's going to do any damage to them. So football is always going to be there. We talk about this all the time. They've counter-programmed football in the past. They've ignored football in the past. 
they've done a lot of different things, and I think they should go back to just ignoring football altogether. You really can't worry about how you're being counter-programmed. You are what you are, and you have a fan base that is willing to buy in, and there is... Look, there's 2.5 to 3 million people, TV viewers right now, I think that would watch Raw. It's like, you know, the ceiling for Dynamite. It's probably, if you had everybody stoked and ready to go, between easily between 1.5 and 2 million people. They just can't get up to that number. They're kind of stuck in a range there between 700 and a million. But there's a higher ceiling there. With WWE, we know there's been a higher ceiling there. They just haven't been able to get things together enough and really be able to stoke everybody. And post-pandemic, we have people back to school. We have things kind of going back to the way that they were really across the board. So maybe the TV viewing now starts to settle back in again. But this is the perfect time for them to be competent. It's the perfect time for them to have any buzz whatsoever as they go into Survivor Series, which obviously leads into Royal Rumble and then WrestleMania. I want to wish the best to Joe Doring, whose brain cancer has returned. Impact announced on Tuesday that Doring, 40, told the company this past weekend his brain cancer returned. He will be undergoing surgery in the coming weeks. He said, they told me in 2016 I would never wrestle again. I proved them wrong. Guess I'm going to have to do it again. I try not to get too sad or emotional about it. Staying positive really helped me the first time. That's what I will do again. Please keep me in your thoughts and spirits. I hope to get back in the ring again very soon. To the Impact Wrestling Locker Room, you are family to me. I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Uh, so. All the best to Joe Doring. And he was supposed to be in the semi-main event here coming up on the 50th anniversary show for All Japan on September 18th. Obviously, he won't be able to do that, but... All the best to Joe Doring because uh, he it was amazing he was able to come back and come on back again. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Tyson Fury is reportedly set to make an appearance at Clash of the Castle on Saturday. 34-year-old will be in attendance on the show in Cardiff, according to Give Me Sport. But will not be getting physically involved in the action, they say. Hmm. The decision to keep Tyson away from the ring is likely due to the fact he doesn't want to risk picking up an injury ahead of a potential return to boxing. A potential return. He doesn't want to get hurt before a potential return? Well, he retires every couple of minutes or so. And on his birthday, not all that long ago, he retired again. So, you know. Here's the thing with him. He's because of his management, because there's this whole... Irish organized crime thing that goes on there like his management can't get into the country I guess his brother can't get into the country that may limit him as far as being able to travel so maybe being retired might be the best thing for Tyson Fury or at least to say that he is in between fights that he wants to have so he can move around a little bit better this bloke here says he has to fight Usyk that's so much more important a guy's name is Usyk <laughs> Brian, it's, you know, he would, he, would he pull up the Ring magazine here for you now? It's that guy's name. Alexander Usyk? 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 Hold on. You guys here. know what an Usyk is, don't you? <laughs> we know here at Whale Scout. What, what? No, I don't know. What is an Usyk? This, you don't know you're what making an Usyk it sound is? very. Uh... Maybe you should look it up. Oh, no. An Usyk? Yeah. yeah. Is it like a dolphin penis or something? It is, isn't it? So uh, NXT, as they prepare for Saturday's World's Collide special on Peacock and the WWE Network, a report from PW Insider has their next one already scheduled. A website reported Wednesday this year's Halloween Havoc will be on Saturday, October 22nd, which is a departure from their... What was that noise? What do you mean? Are you watching a video of Usyk's in action? What is that? No, I don't know. The the boy is in there cackling about with his friends, so I have no yeah, idea what's going on He's probably listening to this show. They probably just Googled Usyk. I'm, I'm looking. How do you spell it? I have the fighter way to spell it, which is U-S-Y-K. Is that how you spell it? Nah, it's not how you spell it. I'm surprised it hasn't come up in your search history. Hey, you know, uh, wait a second. Hold a second. Worlds Collide is uh, is Saturday. This Saturday? No, it's I Sunday. just watched NXT. Yeah, it's Wait, Sunday. Su Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, Sunday at four o'clock. Okay. Yeah. God. It's like Who's good. lying to you, Brian? 
Well, it's on the front page of the website. So <laughs> somebody, somebody there's in trouble. They better, they better issue me an apology for looking <laughs> stupid here on this show. I so you're telling me, you're telling me it. we got Clash of the Castle. I got to go back even further. We got, we got myself, Filthy Tom, Billy Starks, Killer. You're having a match. You're telling me on Friday, and then mm-hmm. Saturday is Clash of the Castle and our yeah. live Q and A. Yeah. And then Sunday is Worlds Collide and AEW? Yeah. And the post-show scrum that Dave's going to have to listen to before you two Why record. did I agree to do this match? I don't know. Except for my own... My in own Alaska. ego. <laughs> Tom's wrestled in Alaska at some point guy. during this match. He may call you an Usyk right before he... In fact, he can whisper that into your ear before he chokes you out. Ooh, you know what my daughter said to me, everybody? Sam here goes, he knows he's he's losing. You know what my daughter said to me today? What? I don't want to babyface myself. I'll probably just babyface her. We're walking to school. She's so excited to go to school. She's so happy. She's She just loves school more than anything. And uh, we're on the way to school, and I, I explained to her, you know, I'm going to... I'm not going to be picking you up Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, or, or Monday, because I'm going I'm to be gone. You know what she says? She says, Daddy, if you win your match... I'll give you 20 kisses. Oh. Don't think I'm going out there to lose. What do you think my gimmick is? To just lose all my matches? You guys you guys realize, you guys realize I am a black belt in jiu-jitsu and I have never stopped training, okay? Do you know when I got my black belt? When? Like 2014, 2015. Who'd you get it from? Bro, I've almost been a black belt for a decade. You think Pedro I'm some Sauer. joke? Pedro Sauer Jiu-Jitsu. You know what I started? You know what I started wrestling? When? I mean, if you go to my Wikipedia, it says 98. Your son wasn't even born. Billy Starks wasn't even born. Most of the listeners weren't even born. Filthy was was in diapers when I when I when I broke in, he was in diapers. I started wrestling 92, 93. You know what it is now? It's 20, it's gonna be 2023. 93, 2003, 2013, 2023. You know how long I've been doing this? Long time. So you think I'm going to go in there and just be some geek? Just because Tom was over there in the G1? Just because Tom's a former UFC, whatever division he was in? If that's what you're paying for, is to just see me be a joke, you may as well go and try and get a refund from Fight, because it ain't going to happen. Plus, I want my 20 kisses. You forgetting anything about that story, though? Because you talked about what Paisley said, what Hanalei said in the back seat was, Daddy, you won't be able to lift us up either by the time you get home because Filthy Tom is going to break your back and make you I'm getting advice from Hanalei. She's a heel. She's totally a heel. I should have her show up and rake his eyes or something. Anyway, John Moxley and Nick Gage will face off in a title versus career match. Say, if you brought her, she'd end up hanging out with Nick Gage. Yeah, probably would. Face off in a title versus career match at GCW Fight Club. Event, ta- event takes place October 8th and 9th from the Showboat Hotel in Atlantic City. Will air on Fight TV. Moxley defeated Gage to retain the title at last year's Fight Club event in October. One year later, they're going to run it back again. Nick Gage's career is on the line. He wins this title or he has to retire. And what's Nick Gage going to do if he retires? That guy ain't no joke either. Let me tell you from personal experience. You know who's no joke? Nick Gage. No. Can you imagine Nick Gage doing a TED Talk? Oh, my God. Tell you what, the showboat is going to be ridiculous. I've seen John Moxley inside the showboat. I've seen Nick Gage inside the showboat. I've seen the showboat just on its own, and it's a it's a different place anyway. But my God, that's going to be ridiculous. Come back from the break. We're going to review NXT, but in the meantime, we'll do some of the uh, some of the mailbag here. The uh, text messages four two five seven eight zero seven five six six. That is the text message line four two five. Seven eight zero seven five six six. Why don't you text me who's going to win the match on Friday? I'll only read it if I like it. <laughs> you have no reputation of doing that. 
This person here says, does the F4W video subscription get you free Observer Live oh, replays? Do, can you please explain this to the people? The YouTube chat, for my God, and the responses have been over the top. Can you well, please you know what? set they, people's minds at ease? They should have uh, learned their lesson when they were all being gimmicks. No, here's what's going to happen, everybody. Starting in September, listen, if you're watching live right now, nothing changes. If you're listening live... Sports Byline, American Forces Network, nothing changes. The live show is free everywhere. The live show is free on the radio. The live show is free on TuneIn. The live show is free on Byline. The live show is free on YouTube. The live show is free on Twitch. Can I make myself more clear? The live show, audio and video, remains free. Live. What's changing is if you come home from work at 6 and you want to watch the show free on YouTube, the replay, it will not be there anymore. The replays, the replays, audio and video, you must subscribe for. So if you're a subscriber to the video service, video.f4wonline.com, yes, you can still watch the Observer Live replays whenever you want. Three years worth of archives, Brian and Vinny, Observe, whatever, all of that. If you are a an audio subscriber, if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com, you get the audio shows. Yes, 13,000 shows, as well as all of the Observer Lives, Observer Radios, everything. The only thing that is changing is the free Observer Live replay on YouTube. But if you're on the YouTube chat right now, and you're trash-talking and talking about having to get beat by Filthy or whatever... Nothing's changing. You can still watch it live for free at noon Pacific, 5 Eastern. The only thing that's changing is the replays. The replays are all going into the archives on the video site or the audio site. That's you the only monetize difference. those because I want more money is really what it comes down to. So you can go ahead and blame me, you heel Brian Alvarez. You're putting this all on me now. I'm shocked by this. Sad, sad man you are. Just because I want 50 cents extra an hour, this is what you do to the people. Shameful. You know how hard it is to find change? <laughs> it is, actually. Actually, I have a big jar of it that I keep because once I break a dollar, it's over. Just everything goes into the jar, and hopefully I'll never need to use it. But This person here says, Raw oh, By the way, hold on. Before you get to that, too, everybody that does miss the show, there is a replay, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. on the weekend. It's not in video form, but it is up on Sports Byline. It is broadcast nationally. It is on the American Forces Radio Network or wherever you can find your audio that way over the air. So there is a replay of the show every day. And sometimes there's one in the morning as well, too, depending on the day. Yes. Raw getting 2.11 million says more about the sorry state of cable than it does about Raw. Besides WWE, AEW, and House of the Dragon, there's nothing else on cable worth watching. Wait a second, my wife will a watch a strong uh, opinion right there. Below Deck Mediterranean now on on replay because it's on Bravo every hour on the hour. I mean, look, there's a lot of shows apparently that do pretty well. There's only I guess a handful of them, and the new shows pretty much do all of the numbers but i mean i i don't i don't know about that that's especially because you know that that on patrol live that kills on friday and it kills aew a little bit too back in a moment with more observer live back in the show brian alvarez here wrestling observer live mike semper vv also of wrestling observer.com it is time it is time. What is on the screen over there? Maybe that was part of the... Uh, <laughs> it's like an eye test. Was that part of uh, uh, Denise's, Denise's deal. thing? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I just looked up and all of a sudden... Okay, anyway. We got NXT 2.0 here today, everybody, which uh, I thought was a good show. The uh, They made a... You know what my big talking point for the show is? I don't care what you or anybody else said. I was right. And you actually you might mean? have agreed. That uh, putting Lash, Leg Lash Legend with Pretty Deadly was like the smartest thing they could have possibly done. Because now, we don't have to watch Lash Legend singles matches anymore. She's in there in six-person tags with experienced workers. She can stand on the apron and learn. She only has to do a few things in the match. I mean, miles, are you gonna miles better. Are you incorporating one of those things, that whole No, that basketball thing, thing? That basketball yeah. thing, like, uh, you know, I never, I never say that anybody needs to be fired because I don't want people to lose their jobs. But I'm on the edge here with, like, whoever is okaying this spot, 
stop. Can I ask you a Tell question? Tell her it looks I, look, horrible. I, I won't interrupt much here, but, like, why they felt the need to get her on TV so quickly. Nikita Lyons at least had some wrestling experience, even though I wouldn't have put her on right away either. They are dead set. Why do they not just pull her off for, like, two months? They're going on, on coconut show loops. You can put her on the undercard of a, a show WWE comes down for, put her in a, a multiple-person tag match or something like that. Why are they so dead set? Well, She's bro, got a big personality, listen, but dude, she they're not a, even giving her skits to show off the personality, really. She has a big personality, and if you're going to put her in six persons and she doesn't have to do much in the ring while she learns on the road, I'm fine with her being on television. But I do not want to see long but, singles matches. But is she going to always be with Pretty Deadly? Because they used her as a way to have Pretty Deadly get a win well, over the champions who are facing Gallus already because you got that thing going on. So are they going to be I, at I the I don't hip? know. I'll, because worry about, Alba Fire, I'll worry about that later. Because Alba Fire last week kept bringing her name up when she was talking again. And it's like, are we going to keep going with that one? Because I've seen enough there. Well, bro, she can get two partners. And I'm fine with it. I'll worry about I'll worry about her going as a single again when they break up. Till then, Kiana James is going to be one of those partners. Okay, so the show opened up with Grayson Waller and Apollo Cruz, and this was a good match, and it was very clever what they did. They did a spot, and Grayson Waller accidentally eye poked him, and Apollo Cruz sold it like a legitimate eye poke. Rolled out of the ring, they had the people come and check on him the whole nine yards. Go to commercial, they come back, and he's he's largely recovered. So at the end of the match. The finish is Grayson Waller goes for his dive roll into a cutter. Apollo grabs him in midair. And, of course, Apollo's crew is that big, his finish is that big slam. So he grabs him. He starts lifting him for his slam. But in midair, Grayson eye pokes him again, turns it into the stunner, and pins him. That was awesome. The, the, the story of this match was great. It was worked very well. Apollo Cruz is great. This was a good opener. We had uh, another Diamond Mine skit. I don't know what's going on here, but the Diamond Mine no longer trusts Roderick Strong, and he's very upset about it. And Damon Kemp made it very clear he doesn't trust Roddy either. So I think Damon Kemp is going to join with Roddy and turn on the creeds, but I guess we'll find out. But uh, Tatum Paxley is is still with... She's not in the Diamond Mine, but she's been training with Ivy Nile for weeks, and they're going to have a match later on tonight. Throughout the show, we had uh, Finn Balor was there, Shayna Baszler was there, a uh, bunch of other main roster. Rhea because, Ripley. Yeah, yeah, the show is Worlds Collide with a bunch of, of champion versus champion and, and interpromotional allegedly matches with NXT UK. So they brought main roster people down to give pep talks to the NXT blokes to tell them you better win this, this match here. So it was a clever way to get main roster folks on the show because usually, you know, when – Advertise in advance, it often helps. I don't know if it's going to do anything for this show. but No, nah, but it was a smart way to do things. It made it a cooler show. So, again, it's just one in their hat, and they didn't have to hype too much up for it. I liked it. We had Caden Carter and Katana Chance against Ivy Nile and Tatum Paxley. And it was a pretty good match. It wasn't, it wasn't a great match, but, you know, there weren't any of those spots where everybody was lost or anything like that. And I think that Katana and Caden have turned into a pretty pretty decent team and you know they did a good job with the other two and and finally uh paxley got pinned after gg and jc ran down and brawled with ivy now the one thing about this show is every somebody runs in in every single match i could do with less of that by by the third time it's like bro i got it people run in all the time they got to come up with something different uh or they just got to beat people I mean, I don't think it's the end of the world that, you know, Tatum Paxley gets beaten, and then you do an angle afterwards. But somebody is running in in every single match. And then uh, Katana and Kate Carter, who are supposed to be baby faces, they cut this promo and they basically say, ah, we beat everybody, so we're going to have a, a, a parking lot party at Worlds Collide. And this leads to Nikki Ash and Dewdrop coming out, who got the big superstar reaction because they're from the main roster. And uh, they shake hands. That match is on for Worlds Collide. We had another awesome Kiana James segment. She's the greatest. She's doing a deal on <laughs> Zoe Stark. This was not as good as the one that she did for uh, uh, Nikita Lyons, but it was pretty good. The Joe Gacy stuff comes down to the ring with the dyad. They want uh, Cameron Grimes to join, so he comes out. 
They try to, you know, give him the big talk to get him to join. He doesn't want to join. I don't need you, he says, to go to the moon. And Vinny's going to be so happy. He's back to his old gimmick. But then Gacy says, just go home. Who are you going to go home to? Your father? Of course, his father's passed away. So Grimes is upset. He gets in the ring. He starts beating everybody up. And as he's beating them up, it's one of those goofy things. Gacy's finisher is a handspring into a lariat. So there's a brawl. And Gacy can't just go to lay him out. In the middle of a wild brawl, Gacy stops, looks at him, turns around, and runs to do a handspring so that he can bounce out for his big lariat. But he's about to lariat him, and he stops. And he hugs him. And everybody pops and Grimes shoves him away and rolls out of the ring. I hate this Joe Gacy stuff. But for the story they're telling, I actually like what they did here. It's continuing on. Hey, the match is going to kick ass between those two. I promise everybody that. Well, that will be good, yes. Pretty Deadly and Lash Legend beat Briggs, Jensen, and Fallon Henley. Like I said, she had to do her stupid basketball spot between the ropes, which it's got to end. It's just got to. But other than that, her and Fallon didn't have to do much. The guys did most of the work. And, you know, Pretty Deadly is awesome. And, you know, Josh Briggs. More so Josh Briggs. He's he's pretty good. Brooks Jensen is green as grass. But he just had to make a comeback in his stupid outfit. And uh, so they're doing the whole deal. And you'll never guess what happened. Folks run out. Here comes Gallus. And they are actually had a, the craziest dive spot. Uh, pretty deadly is outside, and I think it was I think it was all three of them at one point. Pretty deadly and Lash, and uh, Fallon goes running, and uh, JB grabs her and he freaking tosses her, and she flies over. There. It's a perfect catch, and laid everybody out. And so anyway, Gallus gets involved, and it led to uh, Pretty Deadly getting the pin. And then we had the big brawl afterwards, and the brawl turns into a battle royal with 5,000 people enter, exiting the locker room, and it's a huge brawl. Everybody goes crazy, and uh, it's pretty good. We had a Shayna segment. We had J.D. McDonough doing a promo. He uh, literally, his gimmick is, I'm creepy. And he reads the comments. Yeah. Hope he read mine. And we had Andre Chase against old Charlie Dempsey. It was the son of William Regal, but they can't say that name. So the gimmick last week was he was beating up everybody at Chase University. So Andre, the uh, head instructor at Chase University, has got to teach this guy a lesson. And uh, Dempsey does a total, you know, snake pit style match. Andre Chase is doing the pro wrestling. And finally, at the end, uh, Dempsey goes for something, but Chase reverses it and pins him. And Dempsey's furious, and he's going nuts, and Andre rolls out of the ring, and the teacher taught the student a lesson here in this like match. That. Didn't like it. Didn't like it? Well, just because Bobby Dempsey's so good, why not have him actually have a, a match against Bodie? I mean, I want to see Chase actually do more Brody, uh, uh, Chase and Harlem Bravado. I want to see him do more in the ring. But... Uh, to me, if you're you, the way you debuted Bobby Dempsey, to me, make him a little bit of a killer. Give him a couple wins. I didn't think it was important. To well, beat they him should right have done that bat. match this week, and then and then yeah. built to the uh, the match it, with the teacher. But what a cartoon Bodie and Leah Hale are too. On the oh, they're the greatest. Ring. Oh my god, they're the best. Then we had uh, Gunther giving Tyler Bate a pep talk. Zoe Stark beat Keanu James. Bros, I've been telling you how good uh, Zoe Stark is. Very good. Man, she got a match. This is probably the best match Keanu James ever had in her life. And just a, a very good match. Her hit, flip GTS finisher. And then uh, James tries to attack her afterwards, but Nikita Lyons made the save. So apparently, I think they might actually just be putting them together as a tag team for a while. And uh, maybe they'll go for the tag team titles. More, uh, <laughs> they actually had a really cute segment. Yes, I used the word cute. Nathan Frazier is backstage with Axiom. And, of course, Axiom is a former A-kid. And they're both reading comic books. And uh, this Nathan Frazier character doesn't know that Axiom is A-kid, even though they've been together forever in uh, NXT UK. And Nathan Frazier's telling about, oh, man, NXT UK was great. You'd have loved it there. Man, the stuff we could have done there. And, uh, anyway, they agreed to do a best of three falls match coming up at the show, which should be awesome. 
Gallus and Diamond Mine. I'm watching this, and I'm like, man, they must have some big angle after this because there's a lot of time left in this show. But instead, they uh, they don't. You'll never guess what happened. Uh, Gallus wins, but thankfully, pretty deadly. I, I guess this was a little different. They ran in after the match, and they go after... Uh, Diamond Mine. This actually was a segment where the locker room emptied, not the previous segment. But they had a, a giant brawl, and uh, match was uh, it's pretty good. I mean, it was uh, Julius, Brutus, and Damon against Joe Coffey, Mark Coffey, and Wolf. Well, this is exactly what you need, is guys that are green, but have potential, to face a, a, a three-man crew that's veterans that can work. And I thought it was good. Good match. Everybody got a chance to look good. And uh, that was the wrestling main event. And then we had a Quincy Elliott promo. I already love this guy. Mm -hmm. I always, this is the example of nobody wants to pay money to see their neighbor. And uh, my neighbor is not Quincy Elliott. I wish my neighbor was Quincy Elliott, but my neighbor is not Quincy Elliott. This guy's just oozing charisma. Total gimmick. He's just... <laughs> I thought this guy. I cannot I wait. I haven't seen to see level up, but I hope he can go a diva. little bit. Oh my god! <laughs> and then a larger than life character. Yes, that's what Quincy Elliott is. He's larger than life. I like it. And then the main event was uh, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams coming out. And long story short, Ricochet interrupts, and so we are going to get Ricochet versus Carmelo Hayes. Which should also be great. Oh, Hayes on the mic. This too. show has oh. totally turned around. This show has they, totally turned around. And you know what? They've did a good job blending their blue chippers with their people with no experience whatsoever and dri dribbling in some people from the main roster into that. Some people coming over from NXT UK that'll stick around. It's a much better balance now. It's a much more enjoyable show and a lot easier to watch. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Yes, that's right. Next time Dom comes to Seattle, him and I are going to the old curiosity shop on the Seattle waterfront. Where, in fact, you can see all sorts of crazy things at ye old curiosity shop, including hanging from the ceiling. A whale's usik. Yep. And for you, Mike, they have one of those old school machines where you put in a nickel and you turn the crank and there's like... Some lady in her underpants. And then I start doing the crank? You can check that out as well, yeah. Ye old curiosity shop. It's like an adult gravity falls here, yeah. It's uh... <laughs> some weird people in the Pacific Northwest. Are you going to be able to oh, deal with the Oh, only in the Pacific Northwest? Yeah, there's no weird people in Chicago or Davenport or... Boise or the only weird people in Chicago Orlando. are the people that go get slices of pizza at the airport as opposed to any other place in the, that town. My God, are you going to do that one again? Bro, insulting bro, the listen, people. I didn't go to Chicago and think, you know what? I I specifically want an airport deep dish pizza. What happened was I was hungry, and they had an airport deep dish pizza, and so I purchased it. That's it. There's no conspiracy. There's no whatever. That's what they had that I had a hankering for when I now this time can't do that till the way back. I gotta be stick to my diet. Be sucking it through a straw. Nope, not gonna happen. Mm. Not gonna happen. Billy, you, there's still time to get out of this girl. There's still Why time. Would you wanna, oh, you she's going to do a handicap match? No, we're a great team. We almost took out Debbie Malenko. Next time. Anyway, we're out of time, everybody. We're going to wrap it up for today. Mike's here Thursday, Friday, Monday. Andrew's here this weekend, Jim Valley. Got a lot of great stuff coming up, so check it out. I'd say thanks for all the good luck, but nobody offered it. I don't need it anyway. But good I'll luck, be boss. back victorious on Tuesday. Wrestling Observer Live.